It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Brad Miller as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives here in Yavapai County. And now, here's today's Countywide. Okay. Welcome to County Wide. I'm Paul David. Great to have you in studio with us today. Yavapai County Supervisor for District 2, Tom Thurman, is our guest today. Welcome to studio. Good to I, have you back. I appreciate that you asked me. And we have a bunch of uh, different topics today that we're going to run through. I think the first, though, is that you were kind of the liaison for Yavapai County down at the legislative session. So Yes, uh, we call it the LPC, mm -hmm. uh, the Liaison Policy Committee, and uh, I was pretty well shadowed. Carol Springer, Supervisor Springer, for years uh, down at the County Supervisor Association and, and, the, and the legislature. And then when she uh, didn't rerun and I, I was elected, I, uh, Supervisor Davis and some of the others said, well, you know, you have the experience down there. Let's go ahead and do that. I also have an aunt. Uh, Senator Burgess is my aunt. Oh, so really? That, that's, okay. that's healthy, there's too. A, there's and, an in. <laughs> there's an in. Sometimes. We yeah. don't always agree. But uh, it was very interesting, you know, as they say, watching a bill being made, if it gets all the way through, is like watching sausage being made. And wow. so, and so it, it is, it's very difficult. And then sometimes you wonder how a bill even gets through with, with all the uh, concerns and negativity and things that happen down there, even on good bills. But uh, we ha it was very frustrating this year. I, I saw that with our... Uh, Why is that? Well, the House uh, would, was really the responsibility to create the budget. And they start the budget. And everything that they did on the budget this year pretty well was thrown out by the Senate. And the Senate had an agreement, I guess, from what I hear, with the governor. And so it was very frustrating for our folks at, at the House level. They, everything they did was kind of, uh, you know, uh, I, I heard one uh, uh, representative say, why am I even here? And this is what happens. It, it's uh, when you get one, either the House or the Senate, if they're kind of uh, connected or in cahoots with the, with the governor, they get their way. Mm -hmm. And because she has that final say. Uh, and so it, it was a difficult year. It was, uh, things did not go as well as they thought they would. And they actually have a budget now of a higher amount than really what we anticipate income coming in. And so when that happens, we are in a little bit of a deficit. We're keeping our fingers crossed that sales tax continues to rise. In the Maricopa County, Pima County area, Phoenix, Tucson, the uh, sales tax numbers actually came in very well. So when we have what we call a state shared sales tax, uh, that goes to all 15 counties. We've, we've actually uh, gone up higher than we anticipated. Well, that's good news. And that's very good news. Yeah. Now, in Yavapai County, though, generally, we have not. Uh, we've come back better. We haven't gone down anymore, but mm -hmm. we're, we're just holding an even keel. Some of the municipalities have come up some, but it's still, uh, it's still a little shaky out there, but at least we're not going down anymore. Is it ticking up in Yavapai County? A little bit. Yeah, a little construction, bit. Housing, construction is, is up a little bit. Uh -huh. It's still nothing like it used to be. Right. But, you know, uh, I, I have that this glass is, is half full. It's half and full. That, and, and that's why we have to look at it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we're planning that way. And in fact, uh, we've had to uh, hire some more people in our building department because we have that many permits coming in. Okay, that's good news. And we're behind. And so it's made some contractors mad that mm -hmm. they don't get their permit within a week or two. But we're, uh, we've hired some more folks. It was the only department during the whole recession that we actually laid anybody off. And we mm -hmm. laid eight people off. The rest of it we just did through um, attrition, you know, where people retirements, retirements yeah, or yeah. sick or moved away or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we just we did, had a hiring freeze. But uh, but so, yeah, now we're hiring people back in the building department. And, well, it's really good news. Yeah, it is. And uh, and here in the Verde is, uh, is coming back slowly but surely, but mm -hmm. it is. And we knew it was going to be slow but sure. You know, and I don't like the boom bust type of situation. When you get that, those are scary. Th those are scary because you really think things are going good. There's a lot of people flipping houses, making huge money. Right. Contractors are going in and they're building a house, say for three hundred thousand, selling it for four hundred thousand. Well, that's ludicrous. That's mm -hmm. just too much profit. And they were doing that quite a bit uh, in the early two thousands. I remember that. And it, and it was getting. I was afraid it was getting to be like mirroring Southern California where a three bedroom, two bath house is gonna be three or $400,000 right. for just a plain Jane. And what does that do to our kids? They just can't afford that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and in California, as we've seen, something like that is five to $700,000. And it just, it is, it's, it's crazy. 
And so it needed a correction. Did I want a correction like this? Heck no, we didn't need that at all. But uh, it's at least it's coming back slowly but steadily, mm -hmm. and that's that. I like that. So during the legislative session this year, what kind of benefits Yavapai County? Outside the state shared well, sales tax. Well, well, another one was uh, sweeping. They have a tendency to sweep funds from multiple agencies. We, well, had, we saw that with the state parks. and uh, Yes, and, and some of that money came back. That looks better. Our gas taxes, uh, the uh, what they call the highway user fund. It, it, they've been sweeping there up to a quarter of a million a couple of years when it was in the height of the recession. Mm -hmm. The last uh, couple of years, it's been... Around 120 million they have swept out of that and, wow. gi and given to DPS and motor vehicle. This year uh, we were pushing hard and the House was pushing hard that we would return that money because they do have more money. They had about a billion dollars more than they anticipated. I know both Yavapai and Coconino were asking for that really hard. Abs oh, yes. Right. Yeah. Pushing hard and, for that. and pushing hard in rurals, period, you right. know, because we, we only get half the money for the whole state. Maricopa County and Pima gets half of the gas tax money. Oh, gotcha. We get the other half. I'm not really complaining because if you look at it population wise, those two big counties have about three quarters of the population. So they're always saying, well, they should get then three quarters of the money mm -hmm. and because they are selling three quarters of the gasoline. However, uh, that would just devastate rural Arizona. Sure, and sure. so, and that was one of the reasons I went ahead and, and uh, and uh, accepted the nomination and was uh, voted in to be, I'm now the chairman of the Rural Transportation Advocacy Council out of, uh, out of the Phoenix area. And that, what I represent is the 13 other counties. We used to call ourselves the TOCs, mm -hmm. but now uh, the, the new word, they thought that was too antagonistic or something. So now we're called the Greater Arizona. Gotcha. County. Okay, so, but you know, folks that live in the, in the, in the, in the Phoenix area and in the, uh, in the Tucson area, uh, they recreate, uh, and and when they do, they're in rural Arizona. Right, and right. We, and we have you know our own concerns here, like the like the road going to Page sliding off, and and the bridges on Virgin River. That really, how how often uh, do people from Arizona drive between St. George and Las Vegas? Well, almost never. Mm -hmm. But it, you know what? It goes through Arizona. Guess what? We get to fix it. Mm -hmm. So we worked with the governor in Utah trying to explain some of this, and it didn't get anywhere. So. It is what it is. So we, but we get half the money, and and uh, and so this year they, the legislature, uh, the Senate, and the governor agreed to give us instead of taking 120 million, they're just taking 90 million. So we got 30 million more. And so that's ticking Yavip up too. Yeah, it, it clicked up. Yeah, we uh, we are getting in Yavapai County a little over 400 thousand dollars more for our roads. Okay. And so that helps. Mm -hmm. Every bit of it helps. And, uh, and we saw with 260 being approved by a, uh, the ADOT board, that is almost at 30% plans. They figure it'll be 30% plans will be probably in the neighborhood of September. And when they do that, though, then they're going to hire a construction manager at risk. And what that is, instead of uh, getting 100% of the plans perfected and then going out for a hard bid, uh, they actually hire a contractor at the beginning at the 30% level, and he works with the engineers and ADOT and everybody else to try to save as much as we could on the design of those plans. And then he is also, though, the contractor that builds the project. Oh, be darn, I didn't know they did that. Yeah. So he's yeah. got a little more insight, too. Well, yeah. he adds his insight. He too. adds his insight, and, and, it's, and something that large, it's a 60-plus million dollar job. Sure. It's only the big boys can bid those. They got to be able to bond and everything. And yeah. so you'll, you'll see Quit or Police or one of them uh, bid those. And so uh, it's it's a good thing. We'll get some jobs in that area mm -hmm. needed badly. And uh, I'm happy to see that. Actually, if you look at the stats for Yavapai County, uh, compared to all the other 13 rural counties, we've done, uh, we are number one. So you got uh, Maricopa County gets the bulk, then Pima County and Tucson is number two, and Yavapai County is number three. And I'm very ha happy to say that that uh, we're we're happy that this has happened because we've gotten a lot of roads done here, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, uh, I'm a little narcissistic, and and the population of Yavapai County you know isn't as big as Scottsdale. Right, and so and we've got uh, millions and millions of dollars worth of projects, over six hundred million in the last ten years. So. Excellent. All right, yeah. we have to take a break already. Well, oh. you have a Pike County Supervisor Tom Thurman in studio today. I'm Paul David. This is Kenny Wild. We'll take a quick two-minute break, and we'll be right back. I'm a 
stale pills from my friend's mom. We talk about all the common drugs, but never prescription medication. I was addicted to pills. Had I more knowledge, I would have done things differently. Secure your medications and talk with your kids. Visit drugfree.org. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, you, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change the future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out of dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive. Yes! You listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you free GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. That ember can ignite and destroy your home or community. You can't control where that ember will land. Only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how you can help protect your community from wildfires. Ronnie had huge aspirations. He knew he could get pills in the community. He found his body in an apartment in Telford. I never thought my son would take prescription drugs without a prescription. Secure your medications and talk with your kids. Visit drugfree.org. Welcome back to County Wide. Great to have you in studio today. Yavapai Pie County Supervisor Tom Thurman in studio with us. And uh, we're going to jump, uh, change course, Slide Fire, Yavapai County's role in the Slide Fire in Oak Creek Canyon. We offered our services. I'm, I'm very involved with emergency management and the flood control, and, and we offered our services. They really didn't need anything. Uh, our emergency manager, uh, Danny Folk, did uh, go over there. However, uh, they uh, used some of our people for, in the emergency managed operating center there, oh, okay. and, and so we were happy to, to see that. Uh, we're concerned now is the summer monsoons. That's what everyone's thinking about right now. Yeah, you know, and so the unintended consequence is uh, is that it it did good on top of the on top of the mountain on top of the rim. They they it stayed low. It wasn't, there wasn't much of it in the in the uh, crown up in the trees, and so it really created some defensible space. If there is another one, mm -hmm. uh, however, though, what happens uh, with twenty thousand acres? Uh, the bulk of it, it drains into the Oak Creek if it get a cloud burst. And so we're, we're really concerned with that because not only is that section going to destroy a lot of the, the, the Oak Creek beautification areas like Slide Rock mm -hmm. and all the way down the river, uh, what happens when it goes into Yavapai County? Now, uh, one of the combs, if you will, on the river is there are trees that'll catch a lot of the debris and rocks, but it is the bridges. And we know the bridge at Los Abrogados is, is going to be a problem if, if we get one of these. Yeah. But then it isn't very far down the, down the road, uh, down the creek, if you will, uh, is it hits Yavapai County. You start going through Page Springs. It starts, starts going through Page, uh, uh, you know, I, it is a real concern for some of the mobile home parks that are along there, some of the housing that's around there. Uh, John McCain's house is actually on mm -hmm. Oak Creek. And, uh, and so we, uh, we have uh, literally hundreds of thousands of, of bags ready to go to fill with sand. We got the sand at our Camp Verde yard. And so if it gets bad, folks, we, we are ready to just do whatever we need to do to try to help. Typically, a lot of that also, um, I think some of that shipment winds up at Verde Valley Fire District Station off here at Goddard Road in Cottonwood, Cornville Station. Uh, Cornville. Yes, and yeah. Sedona Fire also has mm -hmm. a, a lot. And, and so uh, some of the concerns that I have is actually in the health department side, I wear a lot of hats, is, <laughs> is, uh, is E. coli. Uh, these, when these fires right. happen, uh, we, have, we have so many uh, wildcat swimming holes. 
And so uh, these are going to be very, very contaminated. And it's not from fecal, it's from E. coli. And so we have to warn people short of maybe even putting some signs out that just no swimming until this thing clears up. And so what I'm <coughs> hoping, you know, we've got to get a monsoon. It's been so dry. But on the flip side, I'm just hoping that we don't get a cloudburst. If we can get some nice rains, get some grass growing, uh, then we'll have... Uh, missed the bullet on this and, and we, we, we can go on with life as normal because it's a huge tourist attraction is Oak Creek Canyon. And so without that, that's, that's really tough. And I got to remind folks too is that the canyon is closed, not because of the fire now, the canyon is closed because ADOT has closed it. Yeah, the switchbacks. The switchbacks are closed because it's just too hard to leave one lane open and work on some of those cliffs. They're afraid some of the rocks are going to come down on the road, and they're redoing the asphalt. So it was a five-week program. Uh, they're hoping that the contractor can speed it up and stay within schedule and still be open by 4th of July. I think they're going to be able to do it because they're working day and night up there, too, yeah. according to Dustin Krugel with ADOT. They're working day and night, especially at night. So. And those, those are concerned that it's, it's, it's uh, ruined uh, the landscape in Oak Creek Canyon. I drove it on Friday afternoon, and I'll tell you what. You can see the burned areas, but all along the road and the housing and all the river, it is still gorgeous. It's still green. It is. And I, I, I'll remind the viewers and listeners, too, on June 24th, um, Heather Noel with the Coconino National Forest, and she's bringing somebody in from the burned area emergency response team, the bear team. And they're going to talk about, they're putting their plan together right now on how to deal with, uh, I guess, revegetating the area, the areas that need it. But uh, yeah, we'll, I'll be curious. Now the county isn't, we're not saying that the, this flooding event is actually going to happen necessarily, but we are preparing Planning for, for right. the worst, hoping for the best. Right. And that's what we have to do on, on all these scenarios. Uh, I, one of the things on, as far as bills that I'd like to drop is uh, at the legislature next year, the fine right now for starting a fire in an area that's in a fire ban is $400. It's $1,000 if you throw litter out your window. Mm -hmm. This is way too low. And I want to bump this. I, let's, let's, tend, let's make it $4,000. I want people to see that if they're going to have a campfire or play with fireworks or whatever, when we're in a fire ban, they get caught, it's going to hurt them monetarily bad. Mm -hmm. the, the, people have got to understand we cannot. We are losing our forests all the time. I mean, the, the Bradshaw Mountains, Mingus Mountain, we had uh, two weeks ago, I talked to one of the Forest Service uh, deputies, found three campfires going with the people there. Oh, yeah. And we're in the fire season. Mm -hmm. You know, don't you remember Yarnell? Don't you remember the Dosi? Don't you remember Gladiator? Don't you remember all these Rodeo Schultz? Rodeo Sky, Wallow. I mean, come on, folks. Friends. How dumb yeah. can you be? And I'm just tired of it. Mm -hmm. I, I, these... People have got to understand when they come and recreate in, in, in northern Arizona in the forest or even in some of the mid-levels, fire is, is just, just millions of do dollars. Feel, do you feel like the state's at a zero tolerance? Maybe the county's at a zero tolerance on something like that where we just see it in sight and, and not educate? Well, I, no, I, you know, on any fine, uh, it, and it's a misdemeanor, so it goes to justice court. It mm -hmm. won't go to superior court. On any of these fines, it's from zero to whatever the max is. And so if the max is only 400, then I want something to scare them that I can put on a, on a sign somewhere. That doesn't mean the judge might, may even just throw it out, but at least, at least the threat is there uh, to try to, you know, sometimes government, I, I don't, I'm not a lover of big government, but on the flip side, sometimes we have to legislate some common sense into people that have none. And, uh, and in Northern Arizona, we really, we live in the forest and we live in the mid-levels and, uh, and we saw it in uh, Jack's Canyon fire that just a welder started it. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. In fact, we've curtailed the bulk of our road grading on our uh, county maintained roads because we're afraid of sparks. Scraping and causing it, sparks. Yeah. With, with and then, the we would, then, then we would be the blame for it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have yeah. a Pike County Supervisor Tom Thurman in studio today. I'll be right back in just a couple minutes on County Wide.
All right. I know this isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. Okay. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Welcome back to County Wide. We have a couple minutes left of the program. See if Supervisor Thurman, anything big going on in your district, District 2? Yeah, a couple things. Okay. Uh, Beaver Creek uh, in, the, in the Rim Rock subdivision area. Uh, there was a bridge crossing the creek, very narrow. People drive very fast. And yet we have a park right there, Sycamore Park. So it's very dangerous for people to walk that bridge to go to the park. So after many years of conversations, we're finally, uh, I've been pushing hard and we put a half a million dollars aside and we should break ground very soon on a pedestrian bridge. Nice. So that'll, 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 work, that'll help that park and the whole area there. And the other thing is I went to Colorado with the Verde Front folks uh, looking at what they call the string of pearls. Okay. And the string being the river and the pearls being parks. And up in uh, Colorado, they have in uh, Grand Junction area, they have this type of situation that they've been working on for a long time. Uh, nothing happens fast, but they not only have parks along the river, they're also trying to get a hiking, equestrian, mountain bike type of trail uh, all the way down for 26 miles of the river wow. through their area. And so that's what we're trying to see, what we can use some of that information uh, through the Walton Foundation. Uh, they sent me and a, a bunch of other folks, uh, elected officials and folks, from the Verde up there to Grand Junction and uh, see if we can mimic some of that down here on the Verde. And I think it's, uh, it's a good program. We're looking at opening up another pearl, if you will, or another little take-in, take-out park type of situation underneath the Mingus Avenue Bridge here in Cottonwood. Uh, with Supervisor Davis uh, and the road department that when they put the bridge in, uh, they bought a lot of property at the bottom of it. And so, perfect example, now we can actually put another little park there. So there'll be multiple places to put in and take out with your kayak for your families. If you want an hour or two ride, or if you want an all-day ride, you can take it all the way down to Camp Verde. And so. this string will start up there with uh, Tapco, Tapco and Because they're working Tapco. on that one right now. That's right, okay. in there, and that's, uh, that's just coming to fruition. Nice. And, and so we'll have multiple places like this for folks to use. So I think this is a green type of tourism. It's going to bring uh, the hearts and minds, if you will, of the Phoenix area on how valuable the Verde is. With that then, because the bulk of the legislators are in there, uh, we'll, we'll maybe get some legislation to help. We shall see. We shall see. Thank you so much for coming in. You bet. Happy All to right. do it. Anytime. Supervisor Tom Thurman, our guest today. I'm Paul David. That's today's Countywide, and we will talk to you again next time.